Hello, I'm Dr. Matthew Scott, head of the Human Rights and Environment thematic area at the Raoul Wallenberg Institute of Human Rights and Humanitarian Law in Lund, Sweden. And this is a presentation for the IGNITE stage at the Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction taking place in Bali in 2022. In this presentation, I'll be introducing the FIRE framework, which is a framework for integrating human rights and gender equality into disaster risk reduction. Uh, and this is part of a project uh, collaborating with the Raoul Wallenberg Institute, the Asia Disaster Preparedness Center, Stockholm Environment Institute, and the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency. In the next 15 minutes, I'll address the question, how can governments and civil society actors integrate rights and equality in DRR? And the origin of this question comes from the Sendai framework and from the Sustainable Development Goals, where we can see clearly that human rights and gender equality are core principles. However, when we look closely at these frameworks, we don't get insight into how to integrate human rights and gender equality into disaster risk reduction. And so that's what we'll be talking about in this presentation. The basis for what I'll be talking about is the five years of research and collaboration that's been going on under the heading Building Resilience Through Inclusive and Climate Adaptive Disaster Risk Reduction in Asia Pacific, otherwise known as the BRDR program. And this took place from January 2018 until uh, coming up December 2022. And it's a regional program supported by CEDA with projects in Nepal and the Philippines focusing on risk assessment, land use planning, and emergency preparedness for response. And I've already mentioned who the partners are in this process. Uh, but in addition to the core team, we've collaborated with uh, national and subnational authorities in Nepal and the Philippines, and have also communicated uh, insights from the program uh, in multiple rounds of the Regional Consultative Committee on uh, Disaster Risk Management uh, in the region. Uh, so uh, in order to begin thinking about how to integrate human rights and gender equality into disaster risk reduction, we needed to come up with a model so that we would have a basis for engaging with the different types of situations that actors at national and subnational level address in the practice of disaster risk reduction. And so taking insights from the international level, where we consolidated international standards and guidelines, and drawing also on expertise from practitioners and academics working in the field of uh, gender equality, we consolidated uh, six dimensions of what we called the framework for integrating rights and equality. And based on the scoping work that we did at the beginning of the program, we found that although we see mechanisms and tools and theories about human rights-based approaches and gender equality approaches in development, disaster risk reduction, and climate change adaptation, we were unable to find a systematic consolidated framework that could be used in multi-stakeholder, multi-level governance frameworks. And so this is the model that we used throughout the Building Resilience to Disaster Risk program. What you can see in the model are six dimensions consisting of participation and access to information, non-discrimination, fundamental rights and equality, governance systems and structures, agency and empowerment, and social norms and context. And importantly, all of these dimensions interconnect with one another in different ways. 
And what you can see on the outside of the dimensions are elements that add depth to our understanding of what these dimensions mean. And all of these elements come from that consolidation of international standards and guidelines. And in our view, this represents a significant uh, systematization of a vast amount of learning that's taken place around the world about human rights and gender equality in disaster risk reduction. So it's rather than creating something new, it's synthesizing existing standards, guidelines, and good practice into something that is uh, practical and effective for different actors. And in the next few slides, I'll talk about some of the tools that we've developed using this model in our collaboration with partners in, uh, in the region. So what are some of the tools? The first tool that I want to talk about uh, is the actual consolidation of the standards and guidelines themselves. And this document uh, has been used in different kinds of contexts to uh, support actors to conduct self-assessments. So in my country, to what extent are these existing standards and guidelines reflected in national law and policy as well as subnational practice and procedures? Um, and in the next slide, I'll talk about some of the surveys that we did in a training course on that. Um, but what you can see on the screen uh, is uh, examples of uh, using the different dimensions of the FIRE framework, governance systems and structures, fundamental rights and equality, uh, and the consolidated standards that we draw from, for instance, the Interagency Standing Committee's operational guidelines on the protection of persons in situations of natural disasters. Uh, you can see reference to CEDAW's general recommendation number 37 on the gender dimension of uh, climate and disaster risk reduction. Uh, and you can also see here at the bottom the Interagency Standing Committee's guidelines on protection of uh, persons with disabilities in humanitarian contexts. And those are just three of approximately 20 standards that we consolidated uh, and have used, as I mentioned, in uh, self-assessment for uh, partners in different countries in the region. So we have two up here. One is uh, accessible, confidential, supportive and effective mechanisms for all women wishing to report gender-based violence are provided. So that's a consolidated standard coming from a number of different standards and guidelines. And what we can see, this is coming out of a, a training course where eight countries participated, uh, focusing on emergency preparedness for response. We can see uh, different levels of uh, self-assessed integration of that standard at the national and the subnational level. Uh, a similar uh, uh, question was asked here in relation to persons with disabilities are fairly represented in camp governance mechanisms. And this standard we can see is far less fulfilled according to that self-assessment in countries in the region working on disaster risk reduction. So 63% of these course participants considered that uh, the standard was not reflected in practice. So that highlights clearly a need to take steps to better integrate some of these international standards and guidelines. And as I said, using the FIRE framework helps to pull those standards and guidelines into the forefront uh, using some of these other tools that I'll show now. So one of the tools that's uh, proven uh, well, that has the opportunity to be effective uh, is a set of checklists. And we've developed a series of checklists focusing in different levels of detail, targeting different actors. So we have a particularly simple checklist, which essentially asks actors to consider whether those six dimensions of the FIRE framework have been addressed in any particular measure that's under consideration. This might be particularly relevant for subnational actors who don't have the time and may lack some of the you know, resources and capacities to conduct a more thoroughgoing assessment of practice. Um, 
But what you can see on the screen is a slightly more detailed checklist, but still in a generic frame. So we're asking not only whether those dimensions are addressed, but also specific questions relating to some of those elements that I pointed out in relation to the model. Um, and I won't read them now for the sake of time. But I'll also mention that we have checklists relating to specific aspects of disaster risk reduction coming out of our practical experience in the last five years working on risk assessment, land use planning, early warning, evacuation, and protection of persons in uh, situations of disaster-related displacement. Um, and I should say all of these documents are uh, available on the BRDR's program uh, web page, and we'll provide the link to that. I mentioned already that we've developed training, and this manual will also be available on the training website, and it consists of a series of scenarios, case studies, as well as uh, developing mechanisms for peer-to-peer -peer learning, and that eight-country uh, program uh, that I mentioned is one of those examples of peer-to-peer -peer learning on integrating human rights and gender equality in early warning, evacuation, and camp management. A final tool uh, is the legal analytical tool, uh, which again integrates questions emerging from the FIRE framework, and we've applied it amongst in other contexts uh, to the Philippines Comprehensive Land Use Planning Guidelines. Um, I don't want to say much about our recommendations in that context because the work is still ongoing, uh, but it's certainly proven to be an effective tool for identifying areas for better integration of these considerations that come out of the FIRE framework. Um, so what do we do from here? Well, uh, based on what I've said and based on our five years of experience, three things are clear. The first is that human rights and gender equality are integral to disaster risk reduction. We know that from the Sustainable Development Goals and the Sendai Framework, which tell us that it's the case. But we can also see through the work that we've done in the last five years that integrating these perspectives highlights aspects that are essential if we want to live up to the Sustainable Development Goals commitment of leaving no one behind. What we've also found is that practitioners of disaster risk reduction at multiple levels already integrate aspects of human rights and gender equality into law, policy, and practice, at least across the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, and some of those uh, checklists and self-assessment tools that I mentioned provide support for that. And finally, uh, the FIRE framework supports systematic integration in a multi-level, multi-stakeholder approach. And I hope I've gone some way to convincing you of that. Thank you.